Hi, this is Kirby. Today we're going to talk about Stretch Database. This is a pretty cool new feature that's part of SQL Server 2016. And let's say you have a table that's quite big, maybe it's 500 gigabytes, and the majority of the time the users are only querying the hot data, let's say 100 gigabytes. But the rest, the other 400, is pretty cold uh, data and they really don't um, query that very often. And yet that's hogging space in your database. It's taking up space in your backup files. Your SAN is affected. Any um, copy of that replicated, log shipped, availability, replica, availability group or replica is affected by the size of that table. So you want to be able to take advantage of stretch database and stretch that table into Microsoft Azure. And then your table is effectively only 100 gigabytes because the other 400 has been stretched into Azure. Backups are taken automatically for you. Uh, all that maintenance is taken care of you and you can even do point in time recovery. So this little animation on PowerPoint shows us what's going on. Let's say we want to stretch our order history database. So we pull up the wizard, we pick order history and then put in the criteria or we could say entire table. And that's going to stretch the data into Azure. Now, the neat thing is when the application goes to query this data, it's 100% transparent. No change is necessary. It's a query sent out to the on-premises SQL Server. It checks to see if it needs to go to Azure to that, um, you know, what we're calling colder data. If not, it'll just go locally. If it does, it'll pull it out of Azure and then pull it back seamlessly. The data is encrypted. You save money this way and absolutely no application changes necessary. So let's get over to SQL Server Management Studio to take a look at how this works. Um, so this is our database where we don't have a stretch table. Stretch example two, and the table is called contacts two. I wanna show you a query here that we run and it's gonna pull up an execution plan. And I'm gonna contrast that with what you will see later. My point is I want you to see that once it's stretched, you will see that in the execution plan. So that's not like some mystery. If you were ever looking at performance issues and you were trying to figure out why one particular query runs a little bit slower than others, it's going to show you in the execution plan. But that's kind of expected because it's the 80-20 or 90-10 rule where really 90% of the time you're, you're just querying just this the hot 10% of, of the data and you really don't need to go out and, and, and get that um, data that's stretched in Azure. But if you need to, no problem, it's there and it's quick to get to. So let's stretch this table. We're right clicking on it, choose the stretch option and then click enable. This is gonna bring up the wizard for us. And um, if we just click next, it's gonna do the entire table. But if we click that link there, then it allows us to pick a, a, a criteria that we want it um, to be stretched by. So we're just gonna call it, give it any name like zip. Then we say we're zip equals this value. Then we check it and it says, yes, that is a successful criteria. So we can use that, we can hit done, but we're just gonna, we're actually gonna do the entire table. So we'll click done, click next. It's gonna sign into our Azure account. I've already signed in, so it does that for me. Now it asks us, what it's doing now is asking us for the name of the server, kind of the um, logical server out there in Azure that you wanna create. So it's created a server name for us and we're gonna create um, an admin login. So I'm gonna type that in. That all checks out, click next. And now it's gonna create a, a, what's called a database master key. And I'll, I'll provide a link in the YouTube notes that gives more details about all this. Okay, it likes that. And this finally is the Azure firewall rule. In other words, your on-premise database uh, those that ip address needs to be entered as a firewall inbound rule and so you can just say use the source sql server uh, public ip address that i'm using which is fine or you could give it a, a specific range then it gives you a summary and then we click finish so we'll let that cook a little bit and come back and and let you see what it looks like once it's done you can still 
we can see that it's still processing. Okay, as you can see, it's all done, it's all passed, so close that. Okay, now that the wizard is complete, it may take a few seconds or minutes, uh, depending on how much data you have to actually migrate the data into Azure. If there's, it's a really large table, <clears throat> it could even take hours. But let's run the same query and we'll show the plan and that'll indicate whether it has um, executed this query against the remote data or not. So there's our data, it comes back 43 rows. Click the execution plan and as you can see down here, um, it indicates that we did hit the remote data. So that, that helps in your um, performance, troubleshooting if you're ever curious if the query has hit the remote data or not. So that's the explain plan. Now let's look at uh, another option here. It's the stretch monitor. If you right click on the database and then choose tasks and then stretch, click the monitor option and um, it's going to show us how many rows have migrated. So this is going to take just a second. So I'm going to pause the video so I can um, log in to Azure. Okay, we're logged in now. And you can see uh, our table here, and it shows you how many rows were eligible to be migrated, how many are local, and how many are in Azure. So this is a nice uh, dashboard that shows you what's going on with that table. Now, what if you wanted to undo what we just did? Let's open our tables and you can right click on it. I think we go down to stretch here and then you can disable it. A couple of different options here. You can choose to bring the data back from Azure and that's gonna reverse this whole process that we just did or you could leave the data in Azure. Um, so that is uh, some pretty cool stuff that's been added with SQL Server 2016 allowing you to stretch uh, a table from your on-premise database into the cloud. Thanks for watching.